Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with me. My name is Cotton Candy Doll. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome all. Hi. This is a shifting video. You may not hear any noises or anything in the background or you bite. Um, currently there's no one here, but they can come in at any time. So I will be telling you everything that happened to me at my Hero Academia universe. Also, this is a cringe alert video. Cringe alert. So if you have trouble sitting through cringy things, this might be the cringiest video yet, guys. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I am cringe right into the video, okay? I thought it was smart to, you know, shift to Kegel's house because I haven't been there. Um I mean, last time I did go there, but I mean, I went there for Frodo when he was leaving. I wanted to go in the middle of the night. Why is that a good idea, Cotton Candy Doll? Because Kegel is not a light sleeper. He'll sleep heavily. But instead of going into Kegel's room, I would go to Frodo's room. But then I remembered Frodo had a bed in his room from when we used to like sit next to his bed because we were worried he'd stop breathing at night. So I figured I would shift into that bed. And then whenever I needed to see Frodo, or if I needed to see Frodo, I'd get up out of the bed. Anyway, my plan, I don't know why I came up with this bogus idea. Whatever helps you sit through my video, whether it's like, it might be candy, it might be like drinks, go get it. Go get your, go get your drink, go get your candy before I start, okay? Um, <laughs> if you have to pause the video, pause it. I don't know, I don't know if I wanna do this um, I definitely don't want, you know what, no, because I'm not going to wait to release this video. I have to tell you guys right away, because I plan on going back. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I want to say next, because it might spoil too much for you, so I'm just not going to do it. I had the smart idea to shift to Kago's house and, and to go into Frodo's room, basically, and kind of just be there with Frodo, because the thing is... For some weird reason, Frodo is awake at 3 or 4 in the morning, and then he falls back to sleep in between 3 and 4. So he wakes up within the night, and then he's, and I wanted to spend that special time with him, and replace that with the time that was taken away from me, my house being burned down, because Frodo can't come back to my house. I don't have a, I don't have a private space for us anymore, so now I need to try and make one. You know, the night there is really going to be like 7 o'clock here, or 6 o'clock in the afternoon. But honestly, it's close. it was actually closer to 7 when I did shift there. And, you know, I told you guys, did I tell you what kind of dress? I don't know, an off-white dress. It was kind of a mature dress. It had, like, a little bit of cleavage, but not really any cleavage. It was, like, completely covered up. It's almost like a... It was almost like a sophisticated office dress. Except it wasn't a pen skirt, okay? It was, like, an actual dress. Kind of like you can get away with wearing anything with it. I wore baby dot shoes with it. They did not come with me. So instead I was I wasn't barefoot. I still had my tights. So I beg you know, I didn't come there to, you know, for any <laughs> anyway. I shifted there and I ended up in Kegel's bed. How did I know I was in Kegel's bed? Because I was laying down for one on this king size bed, okay? The blankets were really soft, really thick and pillowy. Okay, so it's basically like this huge quilt. Okay, and um, he was sleeping softly next to me. And his face was like right here, and I was right here. So Kegel's sleeping here, I'm laying here. And the thing is, Kegel is not a, he's not a light sleeper. He's a really heavy sleeper. Like, I could probably sing and dance and whatever else, and he won't wake up. So, I got up, and, um, so I'm getting up slowly, because obviously I can't get up quickly with him there. I have to be careful not to wake him up. I slowly, like, get up or whatever to, like, get out of bed, and just as I'm sitting up like this, like, you know how you guys prop yourself up like this if you're, sit if you're sitting on a bed? His door, Kegel's door, uh, squeaks open a little bit. As soon as it does, he opens his eyes. He's like, 
he looks at the first thing he does is look at me and he goes whoa he goes when did you get here and I'm like I just got here and he's like you decided it was a good idea to, to lay down next to me I'm like yeah while you were sleeping and he goes cotton candy doll you're not fooling anyone you just shifted here I know that I know all about shifting he's like can I just say something so the door is slowly opening okay and I'm like what and he's like if you couldn't shift out of here I would just trap you here forever I would just trap you here with me for like forever you would never be able to leave and I said thank you for that who came who comes teetering again little Frodo from Frodo's coming in and he's like mama and I'm like hi baby he's walking up to the bed and behind him like over his head is a floating pitcher of like milk okay so there's a pitcher of milk floating above his head and there's a glass and so like Frodo is controlling this with his quirk I already knew he could do this um, but I'm not sure it's, it's kind of like uh, Ochakos a little which is kind of scary because it's like okay I don't my quirk was flying I know that for a fact and then the weird one, the odorless thing, or whatever. So he's climbing onto the bed. And I must, I think I'm kind of like weird in a way. I'm kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, he is about almost 12 months, right? So Frodo is trying to climb on the bed and he's having difficulty. And instead of, you know, helping him, I'm just watching him struggle. I don't know if that's actually a good thing or a bad thing, but at the same time, most mothers are probably just reached down to help the baby onto the bed. I just watched him and he made it. I mean, he made it to the bed. But I feel like that's part of me that's also going to like make him a stronger baby. He can already use, you know, he can already use his quirk and everything. And I just kind of stayed the way I was because I didn't move muscle. I just kind of stayed like this. Because and the reason I was like this is because I'm watching Frodo. I'm like, what is he doing? And Kegel looks at him and he's like, Frodo, what is this? And he's climbing up to him and now they're talking. And then he's translating everything he's saying. And he's saying, and Frodo is saying, I'm a big boy. And he said, look, the, symbol, the, uh, the sign for look. And so I looked up and Frodo is pouring, he's pouring the pitcher of milk into the glass, which is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, and Frodo's laughing. And Kegel's like, oh, oh, he's doing like this. And I guess <laughs> Frodo did it so quick and it was so fast that like, even though he tilted the, the pitcher to like pour the milk in the glass, it went in there. But I mean, it, it went outside of the glass. So like this much went into the glass and the rest of the milk got on me. Like it literally spilled. The freaking milk spilled all down my back. It spilled all in my hair. Okay. And I'm like, <gasps> like, I'm already like this. And I'm like, <gasps> and then, so I look over at, you know, Kago to see him. And he's kind of, he does one of these. One of these Frodo. And I, you know, as soon as he does that, he takes Frodo off the bed. He's like, Frodo, time for bed. And Frodo's laughing. I'm like, yay, good job. I'm like, good job, Frodo. Good job. And I'm shaking because the milk is freezing cold, okay? And so now I'm sitting on a bed like this. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? So they're leave, they leave the room. So I'm on a soaked bed. Um, so like the milk is like soaked on the bed. And uh, <laughs> so I put my hands down to like move. And it's like... The bed is so soaked to where if I press into it, there's like a puddle. You can see milk. Like, and it's freaking gross. Like, I'm, I'm grossed out. I don't like milk. Okay. I freaking hate it. I don't drink it. Um, I don't believe cow, cow milk is for people. Like, human milk is for humans. Just like rat milk is for rats and cat milk is for cat and cow milk is for human. That doesn't make any sense, but okay. Apparently that crap's for us, so yeah, apparently. Anyway, 
I'm kind of in a like a, a stage of shock. I just can't believe that. But at the same time, I really can't be angry. I can't be angry because oh, my cute baby knows how to pour milk. Yay! He can pour milk in a glass. I mean, even though it was controlled with his quirk, he just still knows how to do something special. Even though it got all over me and I'm pissed off. Because I, I really was pissed off. Because it got... It was literally... I was drenched in freaking milk. Okay, guys? I was drenched in milk to where... It went through my, like, my It went through the dress. So my, my dress was like see-through now. Yeah, I was wearing like raw and stuff under it. But still, my pants... It was, I was soaked down to my, like, my underwear. And the weird thing is like... It's just a picture of milk. It's just a picture of milk. But all the milk was... It was so much milk that like... Was the bed made out of milk? No, because the milk was, the bed was dry before the milk got spilled on the bed. So I don't understand that. So I kind of don't know what to do. I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay. The first thing is to get off the bed. But every time I moved, it feels like I'm sitting in a puddle of freaking milk. I mean, it's so bad to where it's like, it's soaking through my tights. My feet are freaking wet. And so these guys, they weren't gone for like more than 30 seconds. Kegel comes back in the room. He's like, Frodo is fast asleep. I'm like, what? How was he asleep? And he's like, I guess he woke up because you got, you were coming. Somehow he knew you came and he came. He wanted to show you he was a big boy. I told him mommy's very proud. As soon as I told him mommy's very proud, he went back to sleep. And I'm like, Good thing you told him. He's like, yeah. He goes, now. He's staring at me. He's he's looking me up and down like. I'm like, what? And he's like. I mean, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> um, Because like I said, I can't really be mad. As mad as I was, I couldn't really be angry. Frodo is doing everything he can to impress me and to make me happy. Um... I think he is sorry for what he did, but at the same time, it's like, you know, he got to see me and I don't know if he would normally see me on a day like this or not, but it's like, I don't really know what Frodo's motive was behind that. It's weird. He just ruined something we had and I forgive Frodo. Like I told him I forgive you, but I don't know if he knows I really forgive him for that. He's like going way over the top with this whole thing. So like I said, covered... I mean milk all the way to my freaking elbows so I'm trying to sit up on the bed and I just hear squish and I'm just getting more I'm getting more and more like disgusted and more like you know freaked out from the fact that I'm like in the milk like this and I'm like how in the world is this was milk this isn't normal you know it's like the milk it's it's they did an increase when Frodo did it you know maybe that's the key because Frodo's power is probably like that. I am keeping track of the time. Because I don't want the video to be too long. But this is going to kind of be a long video. Because this is this video is... <laughs> so. That aside. Get the mental image of me sitting on a bed. In this half... Not half. This off-white dress. Okay. It has a little bit of cleavage. Not too much but it's really pretty. Puff sleeves, almost professional like. I even have a belt on with it. So one of those really nice, you know, fluffy dresses. And I'm sitting there. The dress has me covered. But I'm on the bed literally with my arms and legs out kind of trying to like figure out. I'm, not, I'm just in one of those positions where I can't move, sort of. I want to, but every time I move, I hear a squish and it's, so I think that's Frodo's power. Um, I don't think he does it on purpose. I don't think he knows how to use it. It's just like that milk. When I say there was so much milk was literally pouring off the bed. It was falling. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Okay. Anyway. Hegel's getting coming closer to me and he's like, I'm like, what? He's like, what's the problem? I'm like, do you see? He's like, you don't like milk? I'm like, no, I don't like milk. I think it's gross. I don't drink it. He's like, I love milk. I'm like, so? He goes, hmm, you must feel pretty awkward. He's like, you must feel pretty awkward right now. I'm like, 
Yeah, I do. And I'm trying to sit up, but like my hands are like, ugh. Every time I try to sit up, my hands are under the milk. It's weird. It's like it, it's like putting your hands under water, but it's under milk. It's freaking gross. And so, like, I'm scared to like really even move. I'm just like, okay, like, what the hell is happening here? And so he comes closer, and he's like, I know what else. he goes. I bet you're feeling really uncomfortable right now, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, I am. I don't like this. He's like, I can do something you really don't like. Something I know you despise. I'm like, what? He's like, something that's repulsive to you. Absolutely repulsive. That I know you absolutely hate. And I was like, don't, I was like, don't do anything weird because I was like, look, just help me out, please. Just, just get me out of this milk. It's gross. It's disgusting. And he's like, so then he climbs on the bed. He's like climbing. He's like crawling toward me in the milk. It's all over his hands, it's all over his body. And I'm like, so at this point I just close my eyes. I'm just like, okay. I'm going to try to, I'm thinking to myself, like, I am going to try to, you know, shift out of here. So I'm trying to call my guide. And my guide, you know, the thing about my guide is so funny. It's such a funny thing, you know? He's like, you know that song, I'll be there when you need me, just call me. He's like, I'll be there if when it's windy, like, if it's, if when it's windy, like, I'm not joking. That's, that's like 100% my guy. Like, if whenever it's windy, like if is there if it's windy, like when it's windy or something. Like I don't, I know how to explain to you guys. It's like, you ever try talking to your guide and you just don't understand anything they say? It's like a whole different language or whatever. Even though they're apparently talking to you in English, it's kind of like that. Like, but there's no freaking wind. What do you mean? Or you know, or it's not gonna rain today. Like whatever kind of like that so I open my eyes and he's still there and I'm like okay what's he doing that I'm not gonna like <sighs> he starts licking he starts licking me and uh, he does it in such a vulgar way it's like He's like, <laughs> he's licking me. He's like, milk. He's like, where should I go next? And I'm like, stop. So he's licking me and I'm just like, my hands are kind of subdued in the freaking milk. I don't want to move because it's just gross. I'm grossed out because it's like the bed and the bed feels mushy. It's weird. It's almost like, it's, so like, so he's licking me and I'm just like, stop please. And he's like, oh, you want me to stop? You're, you're even saying, please. So you're begging me then. I said, please stop. Please. I'm like, you want me to beg you? Please don't do this. Please, please. <laughs> like at this point, I'm just like, please, no, please. But I'm just being an asshole kind of too. Cause I'm just like, what the fuck dude? Like I'm not, this is, I am mad. I'm not happy because you know, I love my child dearly. I don't tell me, I, you know, I love cute Frodo. I really do, but I can't be mad at him. I can't. But he's like, Ugh. he's like licking my face, and I'm just like, oh my god. I'm like, fine. You know, I'll let him. I'll let him have his fun. You know, and then. So then, finally, he looks at me. And he's like. You taste good. I'm like, shut up. So then he's like, he puts his hand out and I, and I take his hand. And so like, he's like, let's go in the other room. He's like, I'm like, what about your bed? He's like, leave my bed. So what he goes, what about my bed? So we go to this other room down the hall. It's exactly identical to the one we just left out of covering milk. Of course it's dry and everything. And he's like, 
you can't put on he's like you can't wear those those clothes because they're all wet and I'm like yeah my clothes are wet I was like um so just can I have borrow something of yours to put on he's like I don't think I have any clothes in here and I was like yeah you do you gotta have some in your closet you gotta have some somewhere he's like go check so I'm looking in his drawers I'm looking at his cabinets I cannot find anything to put on and he's like you might as well take off your dress then while you're looking He's like, you know what? I'll go get you clothes. Just give me your wet clothes. I'm like, are they in the other room? He goes, come on, then you're gonna get milk, milk. He goes, come on, you're gonna get milk all over my floor if you keep walking around on the floor like that with the with the milk on you. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, hurry up and take your dress off. Take your dress off. Take off all your soaked clothes and give them to me. And I'm like, okay. So I start taking off my clothes and he like snatches them he like snatches them out of my hand like give that to me so give me that and I'm like okay and I'm like uh I'm like are you gonna get me a shirt to put on he's like I'm like what he was broad in underwear too I'm like my underwears are not soaked he said they're soaked your underwears are soaked and your bra is soaked because he got milk all over it you're gonna get my floor all dirty? I'm like, no, just give it. So I take off my bra and my underwear and I just like, fine. And he like snatches it out of my hand. Then he throws it over in the corner and he's like, staring at me. I'm like, what? I'm like, don't do that. You're making me like nervous. I said, can you go get my, can you go get clothes? And he's like, can I go get clothes? And he backs up to the door. And he closes it and he locks it. And I'm like, are you, I was like, are you going to get clothes from somewhere? He's like, I'm not getting, you're not getting clothes. He's like, if I had my way, you'd be around here naked the entire time. And I'm like, but Frodo's here. He's like, Frodo doesn't know anything. I'm like, you don't know what Frodo knows. Frodo is smart. Okay. Too smart for his little baby head. So, so then he backs me into the bed. He like, this is like this and I like fall backwards. So like I'm backing up onto the bed and I have nowhere to go because I hit the headboard. And he's like, you're trying to run away from me. You think you can run away from this? Cause you're not going anywhere. And I'm like, okay, well I can just leave. And he's like, okay, if you want to leave, leave. And the thing is, like, I'll be there if it's windy, if when it's windy, it's like, I know he's not going to freaking answer me right now because I just got here and, God. so then I'm like, okay, well, um, obviously he's not going to let me get close. So I go, um, can I use your bathroom? And he's like, no. I'm like, can I please use your bathroom? I really have to go. And he goes, no. I go, well then your bed is gonna be wet again. He goes, will it be, he goes, will my bed be wet again? And he's staring at me like this, like, and I'm like, uh, so I'm kind of like, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what it, what it feels like to like, kind of like not know what to do you're kind of just like it's it's a uh, and the thing is it's not on purpose like I was I was really just like uh like shoot yeah I might and you know so basically what I learned is that I cannot just do stuff to them anymore and just leave and, and laugh and think it you know I can't just laugh stuff off and think that I got away with it anymore <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't have my own private space anymore. Because Frodo burned it down. And it's like, now I'm going to get it. Because I know for a fact he's going to get me now. Because I had to come here. And it's like... And I can't not come see Frodo. I have to. I wanted to try and see him. For some reason, my shifting just happened to be off. I don't know what happened. I ended up in... 
I didn't end up making Kegel's bed instead. You know. Actually, he's not a really a light sleeper, is he? It's Toshinori that's the freaking light. No, it's, the, it's Toshinori that's the heavy sleeper. It's him that's... The, he's kind of a lighter sleeper than him. But I know for sure he wouldn't wake up if I was, like, moving or anything. Freaking Frodo. All he had to do was hear his little baby voice and, you know, jump up out of bed. I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying... It kind of is your fault, Frodo. Just saying. So I can't really do stuff to them and leave anymore. Because, you know, they're just going to get me back for it. So I'm laying there and you guys can just guess, like... He, like... So first... I told him, you know, I don't really want to. And he said, you think I care? If you want to or not. <laughs> Do you think that I care? And I'm like, um, it was like, yeah, it's because you gotta be in a mood, and I'm not really like in a mood right now. And it's just me being like serious with you. And he's like, fine, let's get you in the mood then. That was a dumb thing to say, cotton candy doll. That didn't help you at all. So then he like, he started like, Sucking on my nipples. It's his favorite. He loves doing that. And then his fingers went down to where my feet were. Which is different for me because I was like a little weirded out. But then he said, you know, he said, you, you feel this? I'm like, yeah. So like, imagine, get the mental image, okay? So get a mental image of him being on top of you. And so like, he picks up your foot. And there's a pressure point in the bottom of your foot that like, is connected to you. <laughs> there. Okay, it's connected to your love milk area. So he was doing that and I was like, I was getting stirred up a little bit and I'm like, I'm like, what? And he's like, it's connected there. He's like, you look like you're a little excited. And I said, no. And But I'm like lying. You can obviously tell. So then he's like, let's check and see. So he put his fingers there. And he was like fingering me. And I like, I put my hands there. Like I put my hands like on his hands to like stop him. And he's like, don't you dare. So I like moved him out of the way. And then I tried to get up and he like kind of like did this and kind of like pushed me back down and then he was like on top of me and he's like I think you're ready for me to answer you and I was like I'm gonna have to just just I guess just take it or whatever since I did not and I'm like fine you know I've been wanting him this whole time anyway you know this is just my you know this is just him like getting his revenge on me but also I know hawks can get really, um, like, really dominant. He can get really, like, dark sometimes. <laughs> I think I was more afraid of the dark street. I'm, gonna get I'm not afraid to, like, do it with him. I'm just, I know he can get dark. And I know that, um, I know he knows how to do it in a way that it's, it becomes a punishment instead of, just pleasure I just don't want myself to get to go too crazy because <laughs> anyway cringy I did tell you guys that let's keep track I'm not doing a good job of keeping track am I no I'm not so he pulls me under him even more and he answers me so he's doing this he's like we're hitting your rhythm and it's like so I'm like reaching my climax and then he's slowing down and I'm like, okay, I'm like, I need you to keep going. And he's like, so then he like flips me over, so like on my stomach and he pulls like, <laughs> he pulls my knees up to him and then he's like, so now he's like spanking me at the same time. He's in me and, um. 
So he's like moaning and I'm moaning and then so then finally he's like he like releases his love milk and then so I'm like so then I like eventually like climax and everything and I have my big O and I'm like grab gripping and grabbing on him and then he turns me around so I'm facing him he's like now let's do it all over again and I'm like so I'm like so I'm thinking to myself like okay I can take it you know I can do it again it's no big deal you know this time I'll even like ride you to make it better so I'm bouncing up and down on him like riding him we're like both yelling and I'm like we're gonna wake up Frodo and he's like you won't wake up Frodo and I'm like I'm gonna wake him up he's gonna wake up He's like, no, he's not. I'm like, yes, he is. He's going to wake up. He's like, no, he's not. And he puts his hand over my mouth as we go to the climax again. So then, <sighs> okay, he didn't release his love milk that time. I did. I was like on the edge of like no orgasm. And then, so I'm like, okay, so. Basically, he wants me to be like screaming my head off because it gets, it's really sensitive now because I've already had two O's and you want to keep going. And he's doing it on purpose. I'm like, okay. So then he's like reaching around. So he's playing with like my clit at the same time. He's like in me and he's like, he's like pounding me. And so like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, slow down a little, please. And I'm like, slow down. And he's like, no. I'm like, I was like, I, I was like, I, I can't. I was like, I was like, you need to stop. I was like, you need to stop. I have to go to the bathroom. And he's like, you'll be fine. You don't have to go. And I'm like, I do have to go. And he's like, you want me to stop? I'm like, yes, I want you to stop. He goes, you really want me to stop? I'm like, yes, I want you to stop. And he's like, beg me to make it to beg me he's like tell me to you know stop beg me to stop fucking you <laughs> I'm like please I'm like please stop please and he's like say it again I'm like please stop he's like say it harder say it louder and I'm like And then, like, he's just making me say this crap. Like, he's obviously not going to. And I know that. So I'm just like, can you please stop? And he's like, no. He said, say your mind. I'm like, he's like, say your mind and I'll stop. I was like, I'm yours. He goes, what did you say? I didn't hear you. I was like, I'm yours. He said, say it again. I'm like, Say that you're mine eternally. You're only mine. You only belong to me. I'm like, I'm only yours. I only belong to you. <laughs> please, please stop. And he, so then he reaches down. He like, he puts his finger. I don't know where the hell he put his finger at. Okay. He just he put his finger in there. Oh, he was there. And so he was hitting my G spot and he was moving his hand in like a circular motion. And I like peed all over him, all over me. It was like running down my legs. It was running onto him. Yes, I said cringy. And then he released his milk in me. And then I also had an O and I was panting and I was sweating and I was just dirty and just I had dried milk on me, so I was sticky and just, ugh, just gross. I was like, yes, I did have a wonderful, a wonderful orgasm, but at the same time, I was like, grossed out too. And I was really disgusted by it <laughs> and repulsed, okay? So he did a really good job at like exposing me in that way and, and you know, 
using that to his full advantage. So, he goes, we better get cleaned up. He was like, here are some clothes. And he goes to the closet, he pulls out some clothes, and they're freaking clothes. They're my clothes. And I'm like, where did you get these clothes? And he's like, Toshinori gave me these clothes when you guys first met. That's why you never got them back. <sighs> I finally gave him, I finally, um, he goes, I finally got the nerve to like wash them. Yesterday's that way you have some clean clothes if you ever came over. So no, you didn't have a home anymore. That was the only thing that forced me to wash it. Because believe me, Cotton Candy Daw, even this belongs to me too. If it's yours, it belongs to me. Your everything is mine. And I'm like, So he gave me my dress. He gave me back my old, um, so I had these freely underwear that I thought it was gone forever because they just disappeared. Remember I was saying like, I didn't know what happened to them. Yeah, he had them the whole time, so. Luckily I had them because I had them put on. So anyway, I took a shower, I got dressed and everything. He got Frodo awake. Let's see, me and him. See, we were like, we did it. Like, he pounded me. Like, he, like, he, like, pounded me, like, to oblivion for, like, three hours. So, it was, like, yeah, it was almost 10 o'clock by the time I got dressed. So, I came in the kitchen. I made, um, he made breakfast for me. I said, where's Frodo? He said, Frodo is still asleep. He'll be awake soon. Like, a couple minutes or whatever. And so, like, He's like, um, so Toshinori is coming to pick you up this morning. And I'm like, why? He's like, oh, I didn't tell you. I'm like, tell me what? He's like, Principal Nezu wanted to talk to you about teaching at the school. You said you wanted to become, you wanted another position, working with the kids, doing something else. I said, yeah, I want to do like training courses. I want to do something fun and different with the kids. And he says, okay, you can tell them that, you know, later when you get to school. So we have breakfast and everything. We sit at the table. Frodo wakes up. Give Frodo breakfast. Frodo is sitting there eating. And I keep looking over at Frodo because I'm just watching him eat. I'm like, wow. This kid has really changed. Like, he's he's a toddler. So we cut up pancakes. We put it on there for him. He's just picking them up, eating them like this. Nothing on them. Um, and then he had, like, a couple pieces of fruit that he put on there with him. So... Frodo picks me up in the limo. We're riding out. We're on our way to the school. And he's like, and Toshidori does like this. And he's like, your hair's a little wet. And I'm like, I know. I'm like, he's like, what happened? I'm like, I took a shower. He's like, you washed your hair in the shower. I'm like, yes, Toshinori, I washed my hair in the shower. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? The only reason I did is because I had milk. It's freaking gross, okay? I had to. I had to submerge my entire head. And so anyway, we get to the school. Toshinori goes off to his class. I go to Principal Nezu's office. I sit down and he's like, um, so I have three people here who want to talk to you. I'm like, who wants to talk to me? So Midoriya comes in. He's like, hey, Miss Cotton Candy Da. I'm like, hi. I was like, oh, long time no see. He's like, yeah, and I and I go, well, what is it? You know, I'm like, you know, I really appreciate your gifts you guys gave me and everything. You know, he's like, oh great. He goes, hi, Miss Cotton Candy. Now I'm like, yeah. He's like, uh, I wanted to ask you something. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, um, where are the other? I'm like, where are the other students who wanted to ask me? And they were like hiding around the corner. So Bakugo and Todoroki hiding around the corner. And I'm like, they're acting weird. <laughs> okay. Because if you guys know them from the show, you know they don't, you know. Uh, especially all of them together like that. And like, no. So he came in and he's like, um, we know about your house. We know about what happened. And um, Todoroki's like, I thought it was a good idea to put that grease in there. So that you could have a, um, if you wanted to make some stir fry or something, you could do it. And back goes like, you, you listened to me last time, um, my recommendation with uh, Kamikaze Pisa, so, you know, I mean, whatever. 
it would, you know, I, I'm sorry that I didn't mean it for that to happen, but, and I'm like, you guys, I'm like, I appreciate the gift you guys gave me. I want to say thank you for that. Thank you so much. I said, but next time you give me something, please like list what's inside of it. That way I can like see what's there. And they're like, oh, of course. And I told them, you know, it's not your fault. It's my fault. I have a child and I should have just looked after him better. I mean, that's all I can say. I, mean, I did take, I technically took responsibility already because I've already paid for it. But having to get like nowhere to go now, so. <laughs> Except either going to be Toshinori's house or it's going to be Kegel's house, one or the other. So it's kind of like I had no choice there. They were like, anyway, that's all we wanted to say. Um, and uh, we want to give you this. And so they handed me another box. It was identical to my box. And so it's basically the same box with all the same stuff in it since I didn't get to open it. And I said thank you to all of them. Sorry, I heard something weird. Okay, continue. So I put the box down, and Toshi, um, so, yeah, so Toshinori walked by, he, like, winked at me, and I watched him, you know, lead down the hallway, I was just watching him go in the classroom, and then the three guys, they, they left, they went their separate ways, so I went back in there, and I'm like, Principal Nezu, did you want to talk to me about something? He's like, yes. He said, I know you want to transfer to, like, a summer program. I said, Yes. He said, what kind of class do you want to teach? I said, I want to do gym. I think gym will be easy for me. I think I will make a really good gym teacher. I think that. And Principal Nezik looks at me and he's like, cotton candy, I know. I'm like, why? Is it because of this, you know, what I did last time with the paint? He goes, it's not the only reason. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well. I go, I still wanted to be a teacher here. And Principal Nezu tells me he thinks it's better if I become, if I become a private, um, a private combat teacher for students having trouble with hand-to-hand -hand combat and close combat. And I go, whoa, are you sure I'm qualified for that? And he goes, you're more than qualified because you know what it's like to be at the mercy of someone. Mm. No, I don't think he means Toshinori and Kago. I think he means I know it's like to be at the mercy of someone, but how would you know that? Where are you getting this information from, Principal Nezu? Because apparently I did train, no, not in their reality, in this reality right now, I actually train kids like to fight and everything, like how to, how to like defend themselves. And so he told me, you know, he wanted me to start working like now. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do that right now. I have other things that I'm doing. I have other things I'm doing. He said, your class will only be an hour, just for today. You can make up your hours later, but I have this student who really needs help. He doesn't have any combat. He has nothing. And I go, okay, so the kid's like a freshman, or he's like, he's a senior. And my mouth like dropped open. I'm like, oh, what? This is a senior? He doesn't have any combat skill? And he's like, no. I'm like, oh my God. I go, what's his name? His name is Yogi. I go, does he have a last name? He goes, he only told me his first name. I go, aren't you allowed to, aren't, when you go to school, aren't you supposed to have both names? He goes, you'll never be able to pronounce the last name. I said, fine. I go, okay, so what time? And he's like, sorry, I heard something. Okay, he's like, he's like, um, what was I saying? Oh. So I'm like, okay, well, what time? You know, and he's like, go well, now. So I'm like, okay. Guys, so he gave me like this big space. Um, the room's completely empty, just mats everywhere. And it's so, like, I walk in and there's a kid standing there. And this kid is a senior, I guess. He just started his senior year in high school. His name is Yogi whatever his last name is because I can't I can't pronounce it. It's huge. It has A's and K's and J's and everything in it. I don't know it. And Principal Nezu said he knows the name but it's no point in telling me it when I'm not gonna be 
I don't have to address him. I can just call him Yogi. Yogi's not his real name. Apparently it's something else too, but... What is that racket? I think it's our neighbors or something. Our walls are not that thin, but I hear something weird. Anyway. So on this room, there's like these mats. Just regular mats. Nothing special about them. And I walk in and he's like... Principal Nezzo's like... This is Miss Cotton Candy though. She's going to be your combat teacher. She's going to be teaching you all the basics of learning how to fight. You have about an hour lesson, and then after it's over, you can come back to their office and fill out some information for me, and we'll get you signed in right away. So, he, so Principal Nezuk leaves. I stay in there with him. And I'm like, hi, my name is Miss Cotton Candy Doll. He's like, I know who you are. I go, okay, well, I go, let's start with the basics. What do you know? He's like, I'm like, do you know how to block? He's like, I'm like, do you know how to strike? He said, kind of like this. And I go, do you know how to? I'm like, you know what, never mind. Let's just see where you are. I go, show me your fighting stance. So he does this. And I'm like, very good. You know, that's a good fighting stance. And, he say, and then he's like this. And I'm like, that's really good. Holding your hands like this, you know. Then he, he puts his fingers like this, so someone taught him this, obviously, to do this the right way. His hands were open at first, but then he closed them. And I said, you know what? Keep your hands open, because that's going to give you more free freedom when you open your hands. And he goes, okay, it feels weird. And he's like, and then he goes, when I punch, it's going to be like this. I said, no, it won't be. You can control how your hands flow. It's pretty easy. And I go this, I touch his hand, like, to move it the way I wanted to. And he like moves his hand back. He's like, no, Miss Cotton Candy. I'm like, what? He goes, I don't like, I don't want, want to be touched. I'm like, oh. So that's why you haven't had any combat training. You don't like people touching you. And I go, how can I train this kid? Because I do have to put my hands out. I do have to show him how to strike. And I can do that without touching him. I said, but how far will you actually get in a real fight? Because real fights end up on the ground afterwards because you learn ground game and stuff. And I said, I don't know how I'm going to train this kid. I thought I could do the Miyagi way, the wax on, wax off thing, or like, um, or like pushing like the sponge that way. How long is this video? I don't think it's that long. So anyway, or you can do like pushing the, uh, the sponge or whatever that way. So you're building up their, their upper strength and they don't even realize it. I thought, hmm, it was something more unconventional. I want him to feel like he's actually learning. But at the same time, I want to actually give him something he can take back with him in practice. I said, you know what? Why don't you go find a broom out of the closet? So he ran in a closet. He grabbed the broom. I, I, went, I took the other end off the broom. I snapped it off. And I, and I gave him the stick. I said, you're going to learn how to use a stick. This is going to become your weapon. This is your main weapon, actually. You're going to use this to fight. And you're going to become stronger every day. And you won't have to touch anyone. You, the, all you have to do is make contact with the stick. So the first thing I taught him was spinning both ways. And I taught him, you know, blocking. And we worked on that together. I had him hit my hands and I, you know, did the blocking stuff with him. And he did really good. And after that, I left and I'm like, um, I told him, good job. He got ready to put the stick back. I said, go home, practice it, and tomorrow we'll do it again. So I went back to Principal Nezu's office. I told him, I said, you know what? I think I can do this. This is a great thing, but I have one class. And Principal Nezu said, tomorrow you're going to have three more students. Sharing them on different times during the day. You can do group classes. You can do, you know, individual classes, private lessons if you want. That way you can still work at the school. And you may even get some of the, the kids from the other classes wanting to come to you train. Which means I may get like Momo or someone else coming to my class or like, you know, even I might even get Ida coming to my class to train, which is awesome. I would love to like spar with him or spar with the other kids. Like, it would be really cool. I haven't done it in like a long time. I feel like these are such old bones to be trying to do that, but yeah. So I have that to look forward to. I have, uh, I have to look forward to going back to, you know, to school to work as a combat teacher, which is awesome. I might even start creating like obstacle courses for them to go through in order to like pass certain levels or whatever. 
Like, I could turn it into a fun thing. It doesn't have to be, school does not have to be boring. Everyone doesn't have to be sitting the whole time to learn stuff. You can learn stuff from doing activities and interacting together. So, right now they don't have an issue with, like, they don't have a pandemic right now there. So, you're perfectly fine to walk around normal, so. But, oh my god, Frodo, I can't believe he did that. Anyway, so, <laughs> I left there, and I was heading out the door, and Toshinori stopped me, and he said, Hi, Canada, will you come back tonight? Come back and see me tonight. And I said, yeah. He said, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay. But I think he knew I was lying, because I can't help it. But I'm not sure. I can't give you a straight answer. I'll try, but it usually comes out slow and laggy, so. I called my guide, and it was finally like, oh, the wind blowed. <laughs> like, I was able to leave then, but yeah. So my shift back there was crazy, right? I can't believe I got rinsed in freaking milk. It's freaking gross. I don't even know what kind of milk it was. I just know that it was, it was freaking milk. And, yeah, you know, hawks never had to, like, lick me like that. I was freaking sorry and I told you guys the video the video was gonna be like cringy because you know the guys they can be really perverted and nasty and just <laughs> just crazy like how they are so making me say all that stuff and he didn't even do any he did not stop just because I said that uh, he just yeah I mean I can't say I did not have a good old and that I wasn't you know I was it's good that I got the love milk because I got it gave me like back all of the you know it gave me back all the happiness that had drained out of me for the, like the whole week or whatever for not going back there so I'm glad I got to go back and um next time I go back I'm gonna have to face Toshinori too I can't exactly run away now <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do like in the future for this but it's whatever anyway um but I am going to be teaching again at Ely High. Yay! And, uh... I'm looking forward to the students that's going to come and see me. I just don't know who they're going to be. Because <laughs> a hell of my hair has been getting in my mouth all day. But yeah, that was freaking gross with the freaking milk. I'm sorry. Like, I hope that never happens again. I think next time I will literally jump off the bed before that even happens. And if it gets on his floor, it gets on the goddamn floor. Because you know what? I'm a big boy. Splash. Gosh. <laughs> Who likes milk? Yeah, I don't like it. Anyway, um, if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a like. If you hated it, you know what to do. Also, um, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you're notified when other videos like this one become available. Ding! And, you know what? I'm going to be doing another video pretty soon. Probably a couple days from now, just for the simple fact that now that I'm a teacher, I have to go back there more often. I don't have a choice, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of me. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do about Toshinori? Oh my gosh, I need to come up with a plan. I really just, I'm just... <laughs> I wish they would just let go what I did, but I guess dressing you up in a tutu and spanking your bare ass doesn't like, I guess that that like doesn't get forgotten easy, right? Especially if you're like a guy who's like not into the sissy thing. I wish they were though, so I could like, spank them and stuff as much as I wanted. And they would just like it. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I swear I'm not, I'm not like some kind of freak or something. I just, I want to hear them like beg. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next video, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.